Hey guys, this is IX World at IX with Rollout Reviews, taking a look at the centerpiece of the new BattleBots line from Hexbug. This is the BattleBots Arena. You get both of the RC BattleBots available right now, Tombstone and Witch Doctor, as well as a big ol' replica of the BattleBox Arena from the TV show for them to fight in. On the side here, you can't quite see because the box is so large and the sides don't really fit on camera, but you can stick your finger in the side here and actually activate one of the hammers as a uh, try-me function here. So that is pretty fun. We got both of the remote controls there on the bottom, and of course, Tombstone and Witch Doctor blown apart a little bit for dramatic effect. So that is very cool. Let's flip it around to the back, take a look at that here. Of course, we have descriptions of both of the included bots. Tombstone and Witch Doctor are a given. They've just got wheels and they both have spinning weapons. So they should work pretty well here. Of course, we have a uh, completed battle box arena that's what it's going to look like once it's all together pretty excited to see that in person uh, one last thing on the back here i wanted to mention is that um i think i noticed a typograph error on uh, the text here you can see it says each playset also includes two ir remote control battle bots tombstone and witch doctor the power of battle is and then it just kind of trails off. It doesn't really continue in any of these other boxes either. You can see the sentence doesn't carry on. Otherwise, it would be, the power of battle is battling, or the power of battle is pulverize the enemy. I assume it was meant to say the power of battle is in your hands or something like that. They just ran out of room, which is certainly unfortunate. Um, one other unfortunate thing is that uh, the box of mine here did uh, get crunched on the shelf a little bit. I didn't notice that until I brought it home, and I, I hope nothing is damaged inside, but let's find out, shall we? This is going to be a tricky one to unbox just because of how friggin' large it is, but we'll try our best. I plan on... Unboxing everything here, attempting to assemble the Battle Box Arena on camera, uh, and then we're going to take the individual bots over to my other filming setup, take a closer look at those, and then once all is said and done, we'll come back here and test them out in the completed set. I believe there's another piece of tape here on the bottom that I did not anticipate. There we go. Anything on the top as well? Yes. They certainly don't want you inside this thing. What's going on here? We have uh, an insert with the uh, the other walls um, and the uh, the glass shields there. Well, they're plastic here, but I digress. All right, we have uh, the cardboard bottom here. Let's actually set the box down for a second and take a look at this. Oh, it's wow. It's pretty big. It's kind of just like, uh, what's the word? Board game material? Like, it's real thick cardboard here. That looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, how do we get the rest of this out here? <laughs> um, hmm. All I needed to do was kind of tug a little bit harder, and the section with the bots themselves slid right out here. Um, the two remotes are just kind of sat in there in these little plastic inserts, and I think really all I needed to do there was uh, push them out here. There we go. Same thing for the other one. Um, looks like... Wow. The bots themselves here are secured with some twist ties or uh, uh, little plastic fasteners here. Does the rest of the arena come out <laughs> at that point? I don't know. Okay, well, it would probably help if I cut the tape on the back. <laughs> I didn't even notice 
that was an option. Uh, and then it opens everything up at the back here so that we can hopefully sort things out. Okay, so these are the little... Uh, what are those called? I forgot what those are called. Anyway, not important. Let's throw those off to the side. Those are the twist ties that the bots are attached with. And then, hmm... Uh, looks like the wall is like secured in there by magic. <laughs> you have to like unslide these and I, I'm struggling to understand how they got this in here in the first place. Well, unfortunately I was forced to, uh, <laughs> rip the box a little bit to uh, get those out here, but I also unfastened the uh, twist ties here so we can pull the bots out themselves. We'll take a look at those here in just a bit once we have the arena together. There's Tombstone, there is Witch Doctor, you can just toss that now I suppose. We have both of the uh, remote controls there which I believe already have batteries included and you just have some uh, pull tabs to remove there to activate those. Okay, now that we have that, let's bring this back in and see what's going on here. More complications and surprises, I assume. I was expecting to run into some challenges building the thing. Uh, I did not expect to run into challenges opening the box, that's for sure. We have a bag with all this stuff inside it. Oh, there are rubber bands around the end here. Two of them. And then a piece of tape. Okay. Toss that. Uh... These details on all of the wall pieces are in fact stickers, same as this section back here. Unfortunately, like the uh, corkscrew deals on the side of the wall here are not in fact uh, a functional element, just the hammers on either side are. It would be cool to get like an expansion in the future where we actually got functional corkscrews, but uh, oh well. We have the plastic shields here which will go around the side I'm trying to figure out how these are connected together ah more rubber bands here they're very elusive they're clear on clear there uh, but you get four of those and they aren't kind of a, a more malleable uh, perhaps acrylic material as opposed to the stronger plastic of the walls themselves here. Um, I believe the system is modular, so you have a lot of options. Yeah, on the corner pieces, you have uh, a slot there, or a slider. I apologize if a lot of this is off camera. This is a very, very big thing. <laughs> Uh, okay, something I have noticed is that there are little punch-outs in the board here uh, on the corners, if I can get this on camera here. So, yeah, see, little bits come up and out, and we should have quite a few of those, um, and those will allow us to attach the walls. the rest of the arena. Hmm. There is a little dent in the board here, and I do wonder if that was caused by the dent that was on the, uh, the box itself. Hopefully that'll be covered up by the wall, so not too much of a problem, anyway. And that should be it. <laughs> That's, uh, it's a lot of little bits. Okay. Um. Huh. Oh. That could be 
a problem. So I fetched the very brief instructions from the depths of the box, and it does look like, in fact, you are supposed to attach the corners first. So, uh, I guess we'll do that. These little bits slot into the corners and then slide to lock. Uh, like this, maybe? <laughs> this is kind of scary. Uh, I need an adult. Lies! Filthy lies! Okay, do yourself a favor. Don't attempt that on camera. It's much easier just to flip the thing over and uh, come at it from the bottom so that you know exactly how you're meant to slot these corners in. I decided to opt for the hammers on the corners here. One on the blue corner there and one on the red corner here. Uh, that's not quite how it is on the show, but I think it works better that way in uh, scale form here. Slotting one of these in, I did uh, rip one of the openings a fair bit, but it's okay because you can't see it from the top. I think from this point on, we are good to go. So let me uh, slot this section in off camera. This is uh, this is a big one, but once that is in there, uh, it no longer folds in half and it is solid. You can see it does say BattleBots on uh, the back of these pieces there. So that is pretty cool. Anyway, there. And once it's all together, that is actually a really solid thing. Very cool, very impressive. All right, okay. <laughs> now we have to slot these in. Looks like there is a lip on the bottom section. I'm gonna put the one closest to the camera in first. I think it's as easy as just uh, sliding it in here. I don't know if it locks in place or anything like that. This is proving to be quite difficult and I'm sorry that my arms are getting in the way. Ah. Okay, there we go, and that's that side in. Two to go. Okay, the third one is in. That is not a good sound. <laughs> tricky, tricky. This corner here doesn't want to line up perfectly. But... Just give it a push. Should be fine. Okay. There is the BattleBots Arena. Yikes. <laughs> this thing is real big. Real big. Okay. Uh, so, we got the hammers on either corner there. You do have the uh, the saw blade openings uh, printed on the bottom, but uh, those don't come out uh, like they did on the original BattleBots Arena toy back in the day, unfortunately. The whole thing would have to be raised for that. But uh, yeah, there is the arena. When I take a look at the box inside this, uh, I will lift up the camera so you can see it from a, a better viewpoint. But uh, until then, finally, we have that together. So let's go over to the other filming setup and take a look at the remote control guys. Okay, so let's start with Witch Doctor here. Let's see, we've got to remove this twist tie and this one over here. Then we got more rubber bands. Whoop! Pieces flying off left and right. All right. Let's, uh, let's put that back for now. 
Oh, well, maybe it really wants to come off. Okay. Get out of here. That's supposed to happen. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, then this... What is going on here? The heck? Okay. Okay, all right. So that slides out. And... Are you free? Are you free? Yes. Okay, let's get all this garbage out of the way. And make sure everything is good to go. All right, you got the uh, power switch there. We have a pull tab. You can see that there is a clear plate on top here, so you can see all the uh, inner workings and whatnot. I bet you could actually, like, use this as a base for, like, real fighting robots that will actually tear each other apart. I know that there are uh, smaller classes in, you know, BattleBot-style tournaments, and, uh, I don't know, this could be used as, like, a starter kit on that level. I think it has batteries included, you know, just judging by the pull tab there, but let's actually unscrew it and see what we have inside. Um, it's in there a little bit better than I expected. <laughs> there we go. Okay, yep, three. Ooh, yikes. Three double A's. Started moving on me there because the pull tab was released. All right, let's put that back on. Forget that happened. Screw it back together. And, let's see, let's turn it on. A little confirmation, I suppose. Yeah, in the form of the wheels going back and forth there. Um, but, let's slide these on here. Just goes on there. Just slides in. I think it's just a friction thing going on. And then the back plate plugs on there. And there is Witch Doctor. Yeah, so you can see much, much more detailed than uh, the push strike version. I will do a comparison later here. This seems to actually come off very easily, this back panel here. But I suppose it does need to be knocked off in battle. I suppose the idea is to, like, knock all the pieces off your opponent until there's nothing left, and uh, at that point you win. Although you could have house rules, I guess. Um, it's really up to you. I don't think there are any, like, official rulings on this playset in the instructions or on the box, so it's sort of just up to you. Okay, so let's see. How do we get one of these working? The uh, controllers are identical to each other, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, remove the tab. Of course, that has batteries. Looks like uh, button cell batteries from the compartment there. Um, do we have to choose a channel on this guy? Is there some kind of, some kind of way to choose what channel the bot is on? Huh. Interesting. I don't know. Let's just, let's just try it out. Nope. <laughs> Let's try two. Nope. Is it even on? Nope. It's not even on. Okay. So, channel one. <gasps> okay. So, I guess you just kind of put the remote close enough on a channel to, like, designate which channel it is. Huh. Okay, well, we have movement, so there is that. Looks 
still got to learn how to control this thing. But uh, there you go. It doesn't help that I am have it kind of facing away from me. Um, and then you have a last button here on top that, when pressed, activates the weapon. And that actually gets spinning pretty fast. And then you press it again to turn it off. Pretty cool. And you can manipulate the weapon uh, without activating this if you want. Ah. The instructions say it's safe to touch, but... Uh, <laughs> and while it is safe to touch, that is kind of, kind of a scary thing. Anyway, there is Witch Doctor. We'll take a look at him in the battle arena here in just a second. But now, let's move on to... Tombstone. All right. So, back section has some rubber bands around it. Set that off to the side for now. What is going on here? We have another rubber band. Jeez, these are. <laughs> Definitely secured in there. Is this like wrapped around the wheel? And then fastened with rubber band? Jeez, okay. Oh, pieces. Pieces are falling off. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. Okay. Alright. I think we've got him free. There he is. Again, clear panel there. You can see all the motors and the circuit board and whatnot. Uh, these, oh, these are just like magnetically attached. So that's interesting. Is there a certain way they go on? I'm guessing like that. And then the back panel here. Again, just gravity holds it in place, I think. Yeah, so that's pretty easy to pop off. And then these are... Uh, are magnetically attached, so those are pretty vulnerable too. Looks like uh, Tombstone's defenses aren't as good as Witch Doctor's. We have kind of a similar like rubber cable here as we do on the uh, Push Strike version. Once again, we have a, uh, a red blade as opposed to like the silver blade from Season 1, uh, just like on the Push Strike version, and I assume that's just so once it's spinning up you can see it better. It's not supposed to resemble like the Season 2 um, colored blades. Kind of just a coincidence. Alright, pull that out, and uh, well, we get a confirmation, but we do have to press the button to turn it on. And, uh, let's see how we are meant to uh, <laughs> program this. So let's go to number two and does that, does that do anything? What about four? How did we get it working the first time? Oh, we should probably pull out the tab. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So you just got to get close enough to it with uh, an already you know, programmed remote, and I suppose that programs the bot. I don't know exactly how you're supposed to reprogram them, but I'll figure that out later, I guess. Anyway, there is Tombstone. Just two wheels, so obviously he performs a little bit differently. But, forward, back. These things are pretty fast and pretty responsive, too. And then we got the turn left and right. And then we can... Fire up the weapon there. Yeah. Ooh, it's a nice updraft going on there. <laughs> and then press that again to turn it off. All right. This looks like a whole lot of fun. I can't wait to get these guys in the arena and battle them together. Uh, let's just take some closer looks at the detail here. Obviously, Tombstone's a little bit more of a simpler bot. And Witch Doctor is style wise, but again, definitely more detailed than the push strike version. Rubber wheels, of course, same on Witch Doctor. I am really, really liking these. 
The stage is set, but before we do any real damage, I do want to show off some size comparisons. Starting with Witch Doctor. Here it is, next to the smaller Push Strike counterpart. And wow, these are small. I didn't realize how much tinier they were until I had these side by side. And overall, I just think these are a better size overall. Yes, these are cheap, they're simple, they're fun, but these are just so much more satisfying. The electronics inside give them a really good heft. And of course, the larger surface area means there's room for more detail, namely cleaner paint application and some intricacies like the white on the teeth of the voodoo skull there. So that is very, very cool. One last comparison here with a standard sized Hot Wheels there, the Mach 5. And I think pretty much everybody has at least one Hot Wheel, so I think that is a good point of reference. Moving on to Tombstone, here is the larger RC version, and here is his own smaller push strike variant. Again, much smaller, much less detailed, of course, cheaper, lighter, easier to come by, but uh, if you can, I definitely recommend splurging on the remote control versions. You know, of course, they're functional, they've just got a really nice heft to them, and a lot more detail. However, in light of the push strike versions, I do want to mention how well these tiny little battle bots here scale with this arena. Because, well, yes, these are, you know, bigger, better versions of the bots, the arena admittedly does look a little bit small with them. However, if you're just going for some kind of grand display, I think the push strike ones look really, really good. And I think they actually scale very, very well. Of course, you know, you can have them hit by the hammer here. That works very well. You can just roll them around. You have to roll them around yourself, but uh, certainly a fun play option if you have both. If you have this arena and you have these, I think uh, on display, if you have somewhere to put this, that is a nice option. But of course, this is for the larger ones. And like I said, they do look a little bit small in the arena at large, but I suppose accuracy is not what they're going for here on a scale level. However, they are meant to fight. So, let's see. Let's turn them on here. Uh, I did notice that after about a minute or two of sitting idle, they will turn off by themselves. So keep that in mind. But turn that on. Get it programmed with the, the four setting here. And we should be good to go there. The arena is quite small. And I do notice that, you know, they will run into walls quite often. Uh, that said, I think you have enough room to get some good matches going, at least. Although, if you really want to get competitive with it, you might want to uh, go for something a little bit larger. Uh, I can't really be sure. But anyway, just getting my bearings here. Yeah. So this should be pretty good. Let's move him back in to the red square on the far end here, and let's test out Witch Doctor. We are set to the one position here. Of course, we got to turn it on. And then let's test that out as well. There we go. Just got to get it close enough to the IR sensor. Actually very fast, very zippy. Pretty fun. I think the four-wheel configuration is a little bit easier to control than Tombstone. If you do get too far away, you know, they can become a little bit difficult to control. They're much less responsive at a distance, but that is to be expected. And then we'll get the weapon rolling there. Yeah, we should be good to fight here. So, I'm just going to set Witch Doctor in the middle and start with Tombstone. I do not have a second player ready at the moment. Perhaps I will do some battle videos in the future. But for now, we're just going to uh, 
take the other one on by ourselves here. So actually, to make things interesting, let's turn on the weapon, set that over there, or maybe get that out of the way completely, and then let's go at it with Tombstone here. This is my first time trying this, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Wow! Uh, <laughs> so, first hit, and uh, we already have two pieces knocked off Tombstone just by the sheer force of things. That's uh, unfortunate, but we knocked one piece off Witch Doctor, so... Unfortunately, the, uh, the weapons kind of... Whoa! Okay, that went flying. Good thing you got these to shield yourself from the flying debris, but uh, once the weapons are spinning up all the way, like, it, all it takes is one hit to just stop them completely, which is kind of a shame there. Might be best to uh, turn off the weapon if it gets stuck, just to prevent any of the, you know, motors inside from getting damaged. But uh, once you get it up to speed, I think the most difficult part is taking off these uh, top sections here, but uh, definitely not impossible. And uh, like I talked about earlier, let me turn off these whirring weapons here. Hello? There we go. Uh, I think how it should be played is once all three of the armor pieces have been knocked off the other bot, uh, they are disqualified and that's the end of the round. And if neither person has knocked off all three components on the opponent's bot by the end of three minutes, then I guess it could go to the judges if you have that many people present. But... I am going to find that uh, piece of Witch Doctor that flew across the room, that was crazy, and then we're going to come back and kind of do the same, trying to pull apart Tombstone with Witch Doctor. Of course, unlike in the actual show, once a bot here has been destroyed, they're pretty easy to put back together, provided you can find all of the pieces. You just slide these little bits on, and then sit the back plate back in place, just like that. It would have been cool if once all three of the armor pieces had been knocked off, it like disengaged the main weapon or something like that, but oh uh, well, I'm not entirely sure how that would have worked. Before we bring Tombstone back into the fray and try and pull him apart, let's first test out how effective these hammers here are. Of course, there's one in the unseen corner there, but uh, let's just try it out with this one here see what we can do. I don't expect it uh, to do a whole lot to the back panel here, but I wonder if we hit the side pieces just right, if those will fly off. Possibly? I don't know. Hmm, maybe this side. No, doesn't really seem like it. So I guess those are just for show. Uh, they're not really effective in a match. Uh, let's try Tombstone here, actually, since the back plates here are just uh, magnetically attached. Maybe those will fly off easier. Mm, no for that side, but maybe on the other side. Back panel. No, nothing. Okay, so <laughs> not very effective at all, unfortunately. Kind of a shame, but oh well. Anyway, uh, before I get going here with Witch Doctor, I do want to point out a, a little bit of a design flaw with this robot design. You can see the IR sensor is right here. That's what uh, transmit uh, transmits to the remote control and vice versa. But uh, these little guard sections here that shield the weapon from getting hit, uh, kind of, from some angles, block the signal. So if Witch Doctor is facing towards you, sometimes the signal will get interrupted, it won't quite do what you want it to, you'll just tap something and it will think you pressed it. It, it mixes up the signal, and it's kind of a shame, because that's not an issue so much with Tombstone, because there's nothing blocking that sensor. So already I think there's a little bit of a disadvantage that Witch Doctor has going on, by design. Uh, with that said, so that I don't have to kind of drive around like this and risk any of that shenanigans happening, I'm just going to make things easy and uh, 
turn Tombstone around here just like that. <laughs> so, let's see. I believe I have to turn this guy back on. And then, there we go. Program it just like that. And I think we should be good to go. So, let's try tearing Tombstone apart. Ah, whoa, jeez. Yeah, sometimes this is just crazy with how far these pieces fly. One thing about Witch Doctor that I noticed is uh, the weapon doesn't quite have as much reach as Tombstone. Perhaps also a disadvantage. Oh, but there it go. Knocked off another piece of Tombstone there at an expense of our own uh, little shovel. See, sometimes it just like doesn't quite respond. Like, if I turn it around like this, and then try, see, it's it's not doing anything because the weapon is in the way. Um, and then, like, I wasn't even really touching it, and it started spinning around. I don't know. I find it's uh, less responsive than Tombstone sometimes is, just because things get in the way of that IR sensor, which is unfortunate. Whoa! Again. Also, you kind of have to be careful with uh, how far away you get with these bots, because after a certain distance, they start getting a little bit laggy. The further you, the further away you get, the less snappy the responses are from the controller. And there we go. There's that last piece. So yeah, I I feel like Witch Doctor is definitely. Um, the weaker of the two bots, the weapon is less effective. The uh, that that IR sensor gets interfered with a whole lot more. It's maybe less responsive. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I feel like if that wasn't the case, it might control better than Tombstone with four wheels instead of two. But uh, I do think that you're somewhat as a, at a disadvantage with Witch Doctor, which is kind of a shame, and it does make me almost want to get a second Tombstone so that maybe uh, certain matches will be more fair. Uh, that said, really anything can happen. Despite on paper how it looks like Witch Doctor is at a disadvantage, um, I assume that, you know, if you're a good enough driver, um, and depending on the situation, it could go either way regardless. It's, it's really up to luck and skill in equal parts, so uh, it really does depend. Um, another thing about Witch Doctor that I found interesting, sort of expected, uh, is that you know, the paint on the weapon here, I don't know how well you can see it, uh, definitely gets scuffed. You know, this thing's spinning around, it's slamming into other pieces of plastic. That is going to get scuffed in no time, so definitely expect that. These toys are meant to, you know, ram into each other at high speeds, so uh, don't expect to keep them in immaculate condition for too long. Similarly, you see uh, Tombstone got knocked up a bit by Witch Doctor's blade, and uh, some of that paint that used to be on the skull piece here is now uh, scuffed up on the edges there, which is interesting to say the least, I suppose. Um, so yeah, interesting as far as balance goes, like Tombstone's uh, armor pieces don't stay on as well as Witch Doctor's, but uh, Witch Doctor's weapon isn't as good as Tombstone, and then there's that IR interference, so uh, for sure I prefer Tombstone. Now, of course, you're meant to have two players with two remotes going head-to-head -head here. But that doesn't mean you have to, because there is another mode of play which is surprisingly really fun, and that is single player. Again, it's not really intended, but it's something you can do, and that's all that matters. If you program both robots to a single channel on only one of the remotes, it allows you to manipulate both of them with a single controller. So, they sort of mirror each other's movements here, and one is kind of favored more than the other, depending on how close they are. Of course, Witch Doctor also decides to be a little bit finicky at some points because of the blockage there, but uh, yeah, it, it actually does work 
and I was not expecting to get as much joy out of this as I do, because it's a little bit unpredictable. You start off by favoring one of the bots, and then midway through, the other bot somehow manages to knock more pieces off of that one, and then you're favoring the other bot, and all of a sudden you don't really know what's happening, and one of them has won, and you didn't expect it. It's still surprising, even though you're controlling both bots, and it's actually very fun to watch. So, you don't have to have two players to get enjoyment out of this set. I think that is great. So, let's just kinda try and kill each other. Both weapons activate with a single weapon push, and then kinda go at it. kind of off screen here. Let's see if I can't get them back into frame. Oop, oop, oop. Let's see if I can't get Witch Doctor up. And that's about it. Although, whoa, that went flying all over the place. Come on, Witch Doctor. There we go. Oop, 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 oop. Yeah. Well, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> but, yeah, really fun. Oh, oh, still going. Uh, I like that. I like that way more than I thought it would. I mean, I had assumed that I needed to get a second person to enjoy the competitive nature of the two bots together, but you really don't have to, and that is fantastic. So for the time being, this is all we've got. These are the only two RC battle bots available right now. They did show off a prototype of Bronco at Toy Fair, but it wasn't released. Probably because they couldn't perfect the pneumatic flipper on an RC level. And it makes complete sense to me why we never even saw a prototype of an RC Bite Force as well. Because his weapon wouldn't really work under a single button press. And on top of that, the bot has treads, which are already kind of finicky at any scale. If you want a larger version of these other two bots, there is another option. It's this third line in the series featuring just Bronco and Bite Force called Clutch and Clash. They aren't remote controlled, but instead there's like this tube connected to the rear with a press action handle on the other end, and you push in the lever to activate their weapon, and you can roll the bot around manually from behind. I don't like them. The tube hanging off the back looks terrible, and the action feature just seems too gimmicky to me. I'm sure kids will love them, but they're just not my thing. That said, if Hexbug makes more of these push strike or RC guys, sign me up for all of them, because they are a lot of fun. But here's the big question. Is this whole Battlebox Arena shebang really worth it? because you have plenty of options when it comes to picking up the RC Witch Doctor and Tombstone. Because you can purchase them separately, in this playset, or in their own two-pack. Now, I will say, the Battle Box looks fantastic, especially so with these smaller scale bots. And for any hardcore Battle Bots fan, I think it's a must. But if you really don't care for how the matches are presented and already have a contained space with a flat surface, then I don't feel like this arena is all that necessary. Because unless your entire house is covered in shag carpet and you don't have a single table, then, I don't know, I think you can have just as much fun with just the robots alone. Basically. I'd say if you don't need this arena, you shouldn't bother getting it, because it doesn't really add that much to the experience, and it's kind of a pain to put together. Maybe if the hammers had more effect on the gameplay, maybe if the corkscrews were functional instead of printed on stickers, and maybe if saw blades actually came out of the ground, then it would be worth it, but as is, I'm not sure you're missing much. So, until next time, this is IX Roll at IX, signing off.